Good morning, New Life family. Good morning, good morning. Glad you're here this morning. Now, I can officially say this. This is our last Sunday of December. I, I'm, I'm positive this time. I was kind of early last week with that, but our last Sunday of this year. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. But uh, I'm glad you're here, Facebook family, those that are watching by Facebook. We're glad you're watching and tuned in with us this morning. I, I pray that the sound and all works better. I know every week it seems like somebody says, I can't hear you. Then I'll stand up, oh, there you are. Oh, I can't, you know. So I don't know what's going on with it, but we're doing our best with it. But we're glad you're here. We're glad you're watching. And uh, we just want you to just, you know, it's been a year. It's been a year, and uh, everybody in this room could probably come up here and say something negative and something positive, but we can all say this, God has been faithful. God has been faithful. So there's been bad, there's been good, and there's been ugly, but uh, through it all, God has, been, God has remained God, and he's remained on the throne and he is not blinded or confused or worried or disturbed about 2020. He's got a plan for 2021, just like he's got a plan for another year if, the, if, that, if it comes to that. So right now, we're going to stand this morning. We're going to get ready to worship. We're so thankful that you are with us today. We're thankful you're tuning in and watching. Uh, you know, we, we are just, it's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord corporately worshiping with the body of Christ. It's just powerful. But we know some of you are still sick. Some of you are still battling things. And we're, we're, we're looking for you and knowing that you'll be back with us, I'll say, this next year, which is only a few days away. But we're grateful today. This is the day the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it today. Father, thank you for the opportunity to come, to serve, to worship, Lord, just to love on you, we, we honor you, we worship you, we praise you. God, we ask you to meet us here. We've prayed this morning already in this sanctuary for your spirit just to consume us, to take control of this place, to move and have your way. Father, we're, we're, we're going to reflect, we're going to look, we're going to look back, but Lord, we're going to thank you for everything you've done this morning. And, Lord, we're just going to give you all praise. Now, meet us here. Let your Holy Spirit consume everything that, about us, that we may worship you in spirit and truth this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Let's worship the Lord, church.
You give light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. The Lord, God has spoken to this house. A message was given in a heavenly language and interpreted for understanding. We thank you, Lord, right now. Church, just hang out right here in his presence for a moment. He has spoken a clear word to this house. He has spoken directly to your heart. And as we just stand here in his presence. Deb, I don't know if you have another song queued up, but I, I just feel like you need to. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. That's just, a, that's just a song. If you can key that up and get the words up. I Just, just, just welcome him here, church. Just, just, just. Be here in his presence. Just stay right here for a moment. Just vast in this spirit that he's flooding his house with. There's a presence in this place that is so sweet right now. Pastor, I don't really know. Then you need to come up here because it's up here for sure. I feel it. I just want you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're kneeling, praying, she's going to play this, and I just want you to let it just rest in your spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Just let it rest in your spirit. Let the words just settle in your heart and your spirit this morning. That he's welcome. You know the words. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. In your presence, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I 
your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you this morning. What a presence you have filled in this place today. What a comfort you have brought in this house today. You know, the children of Israel, when they were traveling through the wilderness, they would set up the tabernacle and go through their, 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 their obligations and their duties and they would burn an incense on the altar, and that, and that incense would go up out of that temple and go up into heaven. And the Bible says it would be a sweet savor to God. And I believe this morning your worship has left this building and become a sweet savor to the Lord. I believe he has tasted it. I believe he has felt it. And I believe he is returning the favor by his Holy Spirit filling the atmosphere of this place this morning. I love that phrase that says, let your glory come. Fill the atmosphere. The atmosphere. The, the mere breath that we're breathing around us, the air that's flowing through here, I'm saying, God, replace it and let it be your spirit that we're breathing in. Mm. Come on, church. Just another moment. Just another moment. Lift your hands and just worship him. He is so worthy right now. He just desires your praise. He desires your worship. He is just wanting to love on you this morning. He's just wanting to caress you. He's wanting to pull you in. He's wanting to hug on you. He's wanting to surround you with his loving kindness. Just a moment. Just a moment. Let's just love on him. Just love on him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. This is, this is one of those times where you just don't want to leave. You just want to feel this. To me, it's just a little small, small, very minor, just a very speck of, of a piece of dust on, the, on a table of what heaven's going to be like because it can't compare it because in heaven we're going to do this 24 hours a day for the rest of our lives in this presence <laughs> because he's going to be there with us. He has come this morning in spirit to fulfill the desires of our heart this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, Steve. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. What a better time and what a better atmosphere to pray in than in right now. So we're going to ask you just to come on and, and, and as Steve comes, uh, lead us. Listen, don't leave this morning with what you came in with. Let go of it today. Let go of it. If you have already, great. But if you haven't, now's going to be your opportunity. We're going to do something a little different this morning. Um, if y'all would just follow me on this for a second or two. 
If we can, every head, every head bowed, every eyes closed. And I want you to take a few seconds, if it takes a minute, if it takes two minutes, I want you to verbally, between you and God, speak out and tell him what you are thankful for. Whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be a need he met, whatever it is, I know we have needs and we're going to get to that. But I know we have things to be thankful for. So if you will, just take a minute or two and do that, will you? Thank you for doing that. I know every time we come before the Lord, it's like we come before Him with needs, with a handful of needs, with our hands out. But I also know that we need to have those hands in the air thanking Him. His Word says, count our blessings every day. And we forget to do that. I had a spectacular Christmas this year. Probably... One of the best ones in many, many years. Thank you, Lord. God promised me many years ago, some 18, 17, 18 years ago, He promised me restoration in my family. And for that separation, there's no one, one person to blame. I'm as guilty as anybody else was in the situation. But God promised me that restoration. And my only prayer that I had during all these years was, Lord, draw my family to you because it's more important that they have a relationship with you than with me. But I knew. Come on, come on. I know my God, and I knew if he got to them, he would condition those hearts. He would change those minds. Yes, come on. Oh, and he did it. Oh, he did it so greatly. Brother Steve, I want to tell you this morning, God's breath is in your lungs this morning. Yes, it is. Woo! Yes, it is. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Oh, we thank you, Father, for so many blessings, Lord God. People, let's take the opportunity this morning while his presence is here. I want to pray with you. Whatever the need is, oh, I'm just feeling something in my spirit this morning that God is going to break loose in something in somebody this morning. Something that's been binding you up, something that's been holding you back, something that's been trying to tear you down. I'm just feeling this in my spirit this morning so strongly. Lord, don't pass up this opportunity this morning. Won't you come this morning?
Come on up, children. Come on. Come on. Fathers, our children are coming. We just take this time, Lord, to thank you. Lord, to ask you to touch our nation, touch our leaders. Lord, your hand is still upon America. And I pray, God, that you will, you will just do a mighty work in the leadership of this nation and, and other nations around the world. God, I pray over our police officers, our firefighters, first responders, all those that serve our communities. Lord, I pray, God, you protect, keep protecting them and be with them, be with their families, our military and their families. Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we just we ask you to continue, Lord, just to move upon our missionaries around the world. Some are still trying to find a way to get back to the mission field that you've called them to. God, I pray you open those doors in every capacity. And, Father, we thank you this morning for your spirit that's in this house. And, Lord, now we turn to our, our children, Lord, of this, of this house. Lord, I pray, God, that you will move powerfully in their lives. Lord, I know people may look and say, oh, well, they're just too young. But, no, they're not. They're vessels that can be used by you in any, in any capacity. And, God, I pray over their families, over their homes, God, as they go back to school, when school returns, or whatever, how it's being done, God, that you will still give them everything they need and every, all the abilities to, to learn and to grow, but most importantly, to grow in you, to be, get closer to you, Lord. Bless everything about them, their homes, their, 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 their guardians, whether it be parents, grandparents, or whatever, how it may be. God, just let this church, let this church, I say it again, let this church be an influence in their life. And Father, we thank you for them right now. We pray over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If the ushers will come, y'all can be seated. Thank y'all. Y'all look so pretty. If the ushers will come, it's time to... Receive the morning tithes and offerings. Hey, they get more excited at football games than they all just did. Um, it's a way to give just our, what belongs to the Lord and, and above and beyond that. Um, I read an article on, on, that a pastor had put on, uh, on his Facebook page. It was very powerful in uh, an article on giving and uh, it was, I saved it, matter of fact. So uh, I just wanted you to, uh, just to be prepare your hearts this morning to give. Would you stand with me? Deb, this is my tithe. It would do what God says it will do. The windows of heaven be opened over me and my house. And abundance of blessings will be released. I won't have adequate room to contain them all. My house will be filled with joy, laughter, many testimonies of what God has done. I am the seed of Abraham, the oath God swore to him as my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithe and offerings into this storehouse, new life, assembly of God, so that we may be a house of rescue. Fathers, we pray every week, as we say this every week, just as a statement of faith. It, it's not something that we just, it's a ritual, it's a statement of faith. And as we believe it in our hearts that you're going to bless us just by giving back to you. I pray, God, you bless those this morning. Lord, you take the, the gifts that are given, multiply it. But, Lord, greater than all of this, and I, and I say this with a sincere heart, help us be good stewards with what is sown. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you bring your tithes and offerings, please?
glad to see our guests here this morning. We want to welcome you. Thank you for being at New Life this morning. We are honored that you are with us. It's not we don't take it for granted or take it lightly. We, we cherish the moment that we have with you today. And we pray, I pray that God will meet you where you are and you receive what you need from him today. If you have your Bibles, turn to Philippians chapter 3. I told my wife this morning I was kind of torn between two messages. Actually, I have three. I'm going to preach them all today. No, I'm kidding. Um, <clears throat> I, I, but I, I feel like this is the one, I really feel this is what the Lord wants this morning. And next week, uh, if the Lord enables me, I'll have another illustrated sermon. And then after that, a, a different one. And they may flip. I don't know yet how it's going to go. The Lord, sometimes the Lord gives me a message and I get up here and he changes it before I even get up here. Uh, if, if you've been a preacher, you know what I mean. Uh, matter of fact, one Sunday I came up here and I had my notes open. I walked up to, my, to the pulpit and I looked at my notes and I closed them. I stepped back away and I walked back up. I opened them. If I did that five times. Finally, the Lord said, shut the book and let me do what I got to do. So when he preaches, he does a lot better job than when I do. But right now, I just want him to use me. I just want to be a vessel. I want the words that come from me to be from the Holy Spirit, straight from the throne of God, nothing from my lips, nothing from my heart, nothing from my thoughts, but I want it to be his. Father, I pray for your anointing this morning. Your words are already anointed, but I pray for that anointing of your Holy Spirit to let me hide behind the preacher. Let your words go forth. Your words can do more in a life and in seconds than I can do in a lifetime. And I pray, God, that you speak to us clearly today in this message, that we get understanding and that this word will find a place to land in our hearts that will take root and grow and develop within us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let me clean these eyes before I try to look out of them. Not these, these. I have four eyes now, so... Kind of bad to wear glasses when you're only 21, but that's okay. <laughs> right. Philippians 3, begin at verse 12. We're going to read all the way to verse 20. 21, actually. Now that I have all, now, not that I've already attained or I've already been perfected, but I follow after it so I may lay hold of that which I was ceased by Jesus Christ. Brothers, I do not count myself to have attained but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal to the prize of the high calling of, of God in Jesus Christ. Therefore, let those who are mature be thus minded. And if you think differently in any way, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, according to what we have already attained, let us, let us by the, by walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Brothers, become fellow imitators with me and observe those who walk according to our example. For many are walking, listen to this verse, many are walking in such a way that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. I have told you of them often and tell you again, even weeping. Their destination is destruction. Their God is their appetite. Their glory is in the shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship, oh, hallelujah, is in heaven. For we also, we await, for, for where we also await our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our body of humiliation into the, and it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working of his power, even to subdue all things to himself. Amen and amen. Listen, this morning I want to talk to you. We, got to press, we, need, we need to be pressing on. We need to be moving forward. Paul says here in this, in this passage, he says, listen, I, I, I do not count myself to obtain it. Obtain what? This walk with Christ, this Christ-like transformation that's happened in my life. Paul's saying right here, I haven't obtained this thing. I'm still going. Paul says, look, I, I repent daily. Paul, Paul had, there was a thorn in his flesh that he had to bear with. And listen, we know we prayed about it. He prayed about it. Three times he prayed about it. And finally, God said, my grace is sufficient. Either Paul was healed or Paul just dealt with it. One of the two. We don't really know. 
that, 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 that messenger of Satan that was sitting to buffet him, people want to say, oh, that was, it was this and that. I think he said that I do not get puffed up. I think it was pride. I think what God was doing in Paul was so miraculous and so supernatural that, any, that, that anybody could have said, oh, look what I'm doing. And it changed the whole concept. Paul's saying here, he said, listen, I haven't obtained this thing. I haven't got to that place yet. I haven't been perfected. Not perfect in body, perfect in spirit. It's a, it's a progress. It's called sanctification. And it's a progress. It's a daily walk in your life as you mature in the Lord and you become perfect. And that, that, that perfect, that word perfect that Paul uses in Romans uh, uh, quite a few times is talking about a spiritual maturity. A growth, growing in the Lord. He's saying here, I haven't got there, folks. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't went there and got my t-shirt yet. I'm still obtaining this thing. I'm still working on it. But he said, there's one thing that I am doing. I'm forgetting what's behind me, and I'm looking forward to what's ahead of me. What Paul is saying is that I'm no longer looking at what Saul did. I want to see what Paul is about to do. We cannot look back at 2020 and say, oh, I, we, I know we've all said this. We gotta, 2021's got to be better. It's got to be better. It will be better because it's not going to be 2020. It's going to be a new year. God's going to do a new thing. Not new to him, but new to us. God's got something planned for his people for the year of 2021. I'm not here being, I'm not trying to prophesy to you. I'm just telling you God's plan from the day of the foundation of the world is still intact just like it was then. Yes. Uh -huh. Nothing's changed. That's right. Yes, that's right. His purpose for your life is still the same. Your destiny for your life is still the same as far as he's concerned. We have altered things. We have changed things. What, we, what Paul's trying to say is I, I can no longer look back at what I went through or what I did. I need to press on toward what I'm becoming in Christ. I haven't got there yet, Steve, but I'm on my way. I'm going to obtain this thing. I'm going to get there. Listen, when we get to heaven, we have, we've arrived. But not until then. We're still growing. We're still learning. We're still moving forward. Can't look back and reflect on what's behind me. 2020 will be gone in a few days. And I know we want to celebrate and say, thank God, it's been the worst year to people. But I think it's been the best year for God. Amen. Why? Because God's got people back on their knees again. God's got people seeking him again. God's got people going after him again. You know, it may look like tragic to us, but to God, it's a destiny transformation of your life because now we trust him more than we did in 2019. Now we have a new faith. We have that, 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 Great faith. You know, you read through the Bible, read through the Gospels where Jesus said, he told the disciples on more than one occasion, oh, ye of little faith. And, you know, I've called, handpicked you, and you saw me do these things, but you're now, you're worried about this water coming in the boat. And he walked out to the bow, and he said, peace be still. Then he, then he looks around, and he tells a centurion guard who said, I need you to go to my house. I got a soldier that's sick, but you can't come to my house. My house is not worthy of you. But listen what this is, what he said. If you just speak the word. Well, we need some more people with that kind of faith. If you'll just speak the word. And he said, I've not seen much any greater faith in all of Israel. Yes. Listen, we got to quit. We, we don't need to reflect. God's moving us out of a season into a new season and he's doing a new thing god's transitioning us from a from a place where he where we were and had to be to a place now where he wants to pull in and dump in and take, carry us to where he wants us to be god's always had a plan for this church church was built in 1970 the day it was put up the day they met in here for the very first service god had a plan for this church not this building for the people that was here. People's transitioned in and out, in and out. At one time, that back wall was not here. That back wall was down. There was over 300 people in this church. When you walked in those glass doors, you wasn't in the foyer, you was in the sanctuary. So if you came in as a latecomer, you walked in the middle of worship. Or maybe real late 
in the middle of preaching, whichever. But when you walked in, you were in the church. Things have changed with the building. But God's plan for this building and the people has never changed. And God has spoken to this church through many pastors, through different prophetic words, through different evangelists, different people have come to this church and dropped a word in this church. God has gave a word to this church through tongues and interpretations on more than one occasion that his plan for this church is going to prosper. But we can't reflect on what we've been through. This church cannot look back and say, well, this happened. That, yeah, we've been through some things, but those things have made us better. Those things have transitioned us. I really believe this. I believe this with all my heart. That, and it's not a bad thing. And this happens in your life. Sometimes we look at God and say, man, how could this happen? Why did they do that to me? Sometimes God's moved people out of your life because they can't go to you to, with you to the next level. But when you get to the next level, there's somebody else he pours into your life. Listen, transitions happen all over in every church across America. In, in, in all big, you know, when there are small churches, you see it more. In larger churches, you may not. But it still happens. But it doesn't mean anything bad for those that leave or anything bad for those that stay. What it means is, is that God's doing something in their life somewhere and he's going to do something in our life right here. But we can't reflect. We can't keep looking back there. Well, remember when this, remember when that. We know, we, we, we got a, he said we got a prize <laughs> that we need to look to. We got, we got a goal that we need to get to. See, God didn't, God didn't start the church. He didn't develop the church. Jesus didn't look at Peter and say, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He didn't put the church here as a club for us to meet. He put the church here as a soul-winning station for the world. He called us to witness, to be a witness unto him. He called us to preach the gospel to those around the world. We can't go around the world, but we have missionaries that we support financially that are preaching the gospel and lives are being saved. Souls are being saved and lives are being changed and transformations are happening every single day. I, you know, right now through the pandemic, things have been on a, on a standstill. Even missionaries are getting depressed. Some are getting discouraged. See, the enemy has taken this pandemic and he's took and he's divided, oh my God, he's divided the house of God. And the Bible says a house divided will not stand. So what we got to do is quit reflecting on what 2020 did and see what God's going to do in 2021. We're moving ahead, church. We're looking forward. There's a prize out there. And Paul says in this text that, that there's people that are become enemies. Now listen, Paul's talking to the church of Philippi. Now understand this, when Paul's talking to Ephesians, Galatians, Philippians, Thessalonica, he's talking to church folks. He's not talking to the world. When he's talking in Timothy, when he says in Timothy, in the latter days there'll be perilous times, he's not talking to worldly people. He's talking to a preacher that's going to be going to churches and he's going to tell him, he said, Timothy, there's going to be people in the church that's going to be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Right. We have people today in our society, in our world, that is calling evil good and good evil. They're living it out with their lives and, 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 what, and they're doing what they're presenting to the, to the world. They're showing it. They may not be saying it verbally, but they're showing it with their actions. He said that people, these people will become enemies and be against the cross. If you cannot look at society right now and tell me that it's leading people away from Jesus, then you're not looking at the right society. The world is trying to get the church to be shut down and closed down and permanently removed. Matter of fact, there was a statement made, and I can't think of the guy's name that made it. He said, Christian, Christian people, you are the ones that need to be removed. Why? Because we have the answer. They have an answer in themselves. 
They, and I'm not, listen, this is not a political thing. This is an end time thing. This is that when we step into 2021 on next Friday, we need to make sure we don't look back at 2020. Oh, there's some good things we could bring out of it? Absolutely. We don't need to reflect there. We need to let the good in this year stay where it's at, and we need to see what God's going to do in the, in the, ahead of us. There's a prize. There's a prize that we're going to receive when we get to that place. We have, when we have obtained everything we need to obtain and be in Christ-like. See, the word Christian means Christ-like. And people say all the time, well, I'm a Christian. Well, are you Christ-like? Well, no, then you're not a Christian. That's what that word means. It means, listen, I'm trying my best to be like Christ until I get there. Amen. You know, there was a long time ago, there was a bracelet that came out. It said WWJD. I, I was a youth pastor when it came out. It was, a, it was a hip thing, man. It was cool. They had T-shirts. They had the, the rubber braces, man. They had all these chains and, and everything. And then the world got a hold of it. Yeah. See, it was originally about a book. A man wrote a book, What Would Jesus Do? And it would give you all, it, was, it, you know, it kind of helped you with your character and your attitude. In certain situations, you would ask yourself, well, what would Jesus do here? And if we responded with that kind of response, we'd probably do a good thing. But the world got a hold of it. And they kept changing it. It was, we want Jack Daniels. A worldwide juvenile delinquents. See, everything that God plans, the enemy's going to try to change it for his good. Even a little slogan like that with a bracelet and a t-shirt, somebody takes the, takes the letters and transforms it to a worldly thing. Listen, it said that these people are filled by their appetite, things of the world. Their appetite is financial gain. For financial pro their, 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 their appetite, listen, is power over humanity. I'm not talking just politicians. I'm talking there's church people sitting in the church pew that wants to rule over you because they think they have all of God in their life. Paul told the church of Corinthians, he said, if you don't stop backbiting one another, you're going to devour each other. Not physically, but spiritually. Listen, it's one thing to physically kill a man. Yes, you go to prison for that. But I'm going to tell you something. I think it's more dangerous to spiritually kill a man than it ever is to physically kill a man. Uh, they're both bad, and I'm not telling you to go out and kill somebody, but I'm telling you, the church is killing one another without using weapons, at least physical weapons, but they're using this weapon. Yeah. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're for tearing down strongholds. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Listen, it doesn't matter how evil they get out there. What I need to do is be on my face saying, God, send somebody to shed a light on their life. <laughs> I've already made it clear. Ever how this election turns out. If it goes one way, then I'll, 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 I'll congratulate. And if it goes the other way, I'm going to thank the president that just served. I'm going to tell him I appreciate his leadership. And if the other one wins, I'm going to tell him, Sir, you're the president of the United States. Count on this. This man will pray for you every day for the next four years. Why? Because it's my obligation. I can't focus on the past. I can't focus on what's behind me. God's about to do something mighty and something fresh and something new. Listen, God can do something that I've never seen before, but it's not new to him. I'm not telling you that I do believe in the end time harvest. I believe there's going to be a harvest coming. I believe God's preparing the world and the church to receive what he's about to do. And I, and I, and I told you this. <laughs> I believe from, a, from what I heard of a, a man speak. I believe it. It resonated in my spirit. I don't believe in every prophetic word I hear. I have to let it line up. And what I do is step back and say, okay, God, they said it, that you said it, so let's see you do it. And that's, that's how I treat it. I don't disrespect anybody. But I believe this man said that what God is doing is not about an election. It's about finding out who has faith and where their faith is at. So many people, so many Christians, people that have served the Lord or say they serve the Lord, right now their faith is on CNN and Fox News because they were leaving. When in reality, this is the only truth. This is the only truth. 
Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, people are trying their best to create their own way. To create their, they're having their own gods. They're creating roads to get to their gods. I want to tell you something. I don't want them to do with their God. We can't reflect. We can't, we can't look back on what has been. We have to look forward on what God is going to do. What God did in 2020 is going to stay in 2020. I don't care how great it was or how good it was. And he don't look back on it. Look ahead because what God has ahead is greater than what you just came out of, no matter how good or bad it was. He says, those that are mature and thus minded, we need to walk together. If the church is the church, and I don't care what your name is, I don't care what your domination is. If you preach the word of God, and you preach thus saith the Lord, and you preach that Jesus is the only way to heaven, then you're preaching the gospel. It doesn't matter what your name is. But the church right now needs to be the church and stand together and as one. Because when Jesus prayed in John 17, he said, Lord, I pray that they will be one as we are one. He's not talking about just a certain name or a certain denomination. He's talking about the church that he said that he, would, that he built upon the rock. That word church in that translation is humanity. Jesus didn't build any building in his life, even though he was a carpenter. He never built a, a, a temple. He never built a synagogue. Jesus built people because people are his church. And families is what God created. And families is what builds up communities and churches. If you take the people out of Griffin, Griffin no longer exists. Come on, church. It's, it's we, we are what make up. We, although it's pretty big right now, and there's a lot of people there, but there's still room in the kingdom for the remaining people on this earth. Because the kingdom has no limits. But there are people that have chosen on their own ways. Not to be part of that. We're being told, listen, we're being told things the cans and can't do. We're being dictated and governed by by a government, listen, that absolutely cares, in, cares less about you than what you think they do. Come on, church. Oh, I'm not trying to get political, but I keep going there. <laughs> because, listen, I'm watching, I'm seeing things. And... Pastor, you believe everything you read? I don't believe everything I read. I try to check it with the Spirit of God, and I try to check it with the Word. If somebody says, I got a word for you, I say, go ahead, give it to me. And they finish with it, I'm like, thank you, I received that word. Then I go to the Word of God, and I start reading it, and I start praying. I say, God, if this is you, then it, then it listen, what I preached to you a while back, His Word will not return void. If somebody speaks something into your life from God, it's got to come to pass if it's from God. Amen. Because His Word cannot go un. Deliverable. If they say, Steve, I got a word from God, and they tell you, and if it's from God, it will happen. If it don't, then it wasn't from him. Right. Bottom line. I'm not trying to get into things. I'm trying to tell you, if you, if you read something in that word, and that word, I'm going to use yours this time. If you read something in that word, and that word speaks to you, you better understand it's going to take place. Because it only can deliver truth. And the Bible says the promises of God are yes and amen. That's right. So if he said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. We sang that song, that very first song we sang. We talked about this the other day. We sang that song, You Haven't Failed Me Yet. We need to take that word yet out because that gives a possibility, and he has no possibility That's to fail. Right. I know it's just a play on words. I know it's just a song. Okay. <laughs> but it says you're not going to start now. Listen, God cannot fail. When March came of 2020, I'm still talking about it because I'm still in it. I ain't got over on the other side yet. So when March came, the world was shut down. We were locked down. No flights. You couldn't go to restaurants. You couldn't go here. You couldn't go there. You couldn't leave your house. You couldn't have family. You couldn't see family. You couldn't see friends. You couldn't go to church. The enemy's like, ha, I got an idea. I'll put church in the parking lot. We'll put it online so it can become a convenience for people. When church is convenient, it's wrong. Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you my heart. I believe people today, and I'm not saying anybody that I know 
will do this. But there are people that's part of God's kingdom that will probably not walk back into a church door in 2021. And here's the thing. When somebody gets on the news and says, coronavirus is gone, who's going to believe it? Who's going to believe it? Listen, we can't look back. We can't reflect. We can't see what this person did, what that person did. We can't, you know, we, I know we, point, we can point fingers all day long at, at this virus. We can point fingers all day long at the social injustice. Social injustice didn't just happen in 2020, church. It's been going on for centuries. It ain't just something new. There's always been racism in America and around the world. There's always been certain people against certain people. It's not always about color. Sometimes it's about social status. Sometimes the rich look down at the poor and say, you don't measure up to me. That's racism. It ain't got to be about a color thing. But as a matter of fact, racism is a matter of the heart anyway, not of the mind. So what Jesus said, store up your treasures in heaven, because where your treasure is, your heart will be also. See, people have an evil heart. They're corrupt. We were talking earlier outside in the foyer. I'll tell you this, evil, evil does not have a color. Evil can be anything it needs to be and work with anybody it needs to work with. And there's some people right now that live in Washington, D.C. that are plumb evil. Why? They choose to be. They weren't born that way. They chose that route. They chose to be that way. They have let the enemy of hell invade their life and corrupt their heart. And now all they want to do is the evil side of things. So they can, listen, for, 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 listen, for financial gain and power. That's right. right. Exactly. I'm going to make a statement. Please do not throw anything. And here's what I'm going to tell you. That's also in the church. There's people that want financial gain and power so they can rule you inside of a church sanctuary. I don't have anything against any mega church as long as that church is spirit filled and, and preaching the word of God and doing and living out the, what, what the Bible says. But when they start trying to remove God from the, from the message and they start trying to empty your life savings into their life savings, there's a problem there. The Bible says the gospel is not for self-gain. You cannot sell this. There was a sorcerer who tried to buy the Holy Spirit, and Peter cursed him. You can't buy this stuff. This was given at a rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. It's been paid for, and it's free. All you got to do is use it the way it was written. Apply it to your life. You see, a lot of people say, Pastor... Man, Pastor, I've read the Bible through 25 times. I've read, I read the Bible every day. I said, do you read it or do you apply it? There's two different, it's different. You can read it, but do you apply it and live out the principles? It's a word that's planted in us that grows and develops. And, 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 and you know, Paul had to go back to the Corinthian church in his second letter and say, listen, some of you were still drinking milk when you should be in the meat of the word. You need to get the milk, get rid of the bottle and start eating the meat because you're never going to grow and nourish and become anything if you stay on the milk. If you give your child milk till they're 21, I promise you they won't be healthy. That's right. My mom's former pastor, Brother Barfield, used to tell his church, he says, listen, I don't mind feeding you milk, but I hate getting out of your mustache. My brothers told me that. My mom's told me that. Listen, it's about time that we mature. It's about time that we came to that part of perfection. We ain't obtained it all, but it's, time, it's about time we grew from 2020 into 2021 and be better than what we were coming out of this year. Why? Because God has better things. Oh, is it, you mean, Pastor, is it going to be back to normal? What's normal look like? Somebody tell me what normal looks like. Me and Deb went around and gave some people that haven't been here a poinsettia and just kind of had prayer with them. And every house we went to, now some we didn't get to see. I went to one house, I rang the doorbell, rang the doorbell, rang the doorbell, rang the doorbell. The doorbell don't work. So I left it on the back porch and I found out later, the doorbell don't work. I was at home, you should have knocked. Remind me of Revelations 2.20. Stand at the door and knock. But 
We went to several houses, and everyone we went to was just so grateful and so thankful to see us. And, the, and all their talk was, I want to be back so bad. I want to come back so bad. I said, listen, when you're ready, come. The door's open. I know, but I know you probably, th I, I don't think anything of you. I respect your wishes. As a pastor, I do, I pray for you. I don't judge you. You know, I, I know there's a lot of people out there in fear, which fear is not of God. But there's a lot of people out there that's really concerned. And a lot of people out there are being told by family members what to do, and they're trying not to stir up the hornet's nest, I guess. Whatever the case may be, I said, the doors are open. When you're ready, you come, and we'll receive you when you get there. I said, and I'll tell you this. If you come through those doors and you want to wear a mask, you wear a mask. If you come through those doors, you don't want nobody to touch you, then don't let nobody touch you. If you want to come, they, listen, our people, this church hugs people. Yep. Let me say this. God's people hugs people <laughs> because God is love. And church, every church I've ever been to, majority of them, people didn't shake your hand. I don't care if you walked in the first time, somebody going to grab you and hug your neck because that's who we are. So when they put social distancing out there and they tried to separate us, they, they, they had a mission and a mindset, church. It wasn't for protection only. It was to divide the church and separate the people of God. Amen. Why? Because there's strength in numbers. I'm not, man, why am I going this way? I wasn't even planning on saying this stuff today. I had some. I should have wrote it down. Listen. <laughs> They walk in the door. There's churches that done this, and I thought it was pretty cool. We were not really big enough to do it, but some of the churches, they, they had armbands. One color was one thing. One color was one thing. They had like red, yellow, and green. Red means, oh, don't touch me. Don't get near me. I love you. I'll, I'll wave at you from a distance. One was yellow, like, hey, proceed with caution. And one was green, like, hey, let's go all in. I thought that was amazing. That's great. You know, you got a green band, I'm going to come hug your neck. But... If you got a red band on, I'm going to stand over here and say, hi, how y'all doing? But the point of it is, I'm going to acknowledge you. I'm still going to receive you. I'm still going to accept you. I'm still going to love you. still going to pray for you. But I really wish you put that green band on. Because <laughs> I really want to hug your neck right now. And some of the ones we went to, we actually invited us in. And we stood in the living room and we prayed. We went to J.D. and Mary and Dawson's house. We were standing in the living room. And she, when I walked in, she says, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I said, what? She said, I don't know, but the preacher come to my house. I didn't do it. I said, you're fine. <laughs> but we stood there praying, and J.D. leaned over to Deb. She almost started crying. He said, I sure miss you, honey. He's going through a battle. I'm just going to tell you out front, he's got Alzheimer's. Steve and Debbie know his daughter pretty well and son-in-law. So... Uh, he has good days and bad days. She said, it's not because of the virus we haven't been, it's because of him. She said, I go in, and, and one day he's fine all day long. The next day he's good for an hour. Then the next hour and a half, two hours, I can't hardly do nothing with him. I said, well, listen, when you're ready, you just come. And we're just going to put hands on him. We're going to believe he's going to have a great day. God heals him, he heals him, but I'm just going to pray he has a great day. That he has no problems. But they were so grateful. They were so, just, you know, just to see us. Oh, we're so glad you came. We're so glad you're here. Thank you for just visiting us. People are desperate now for people to commune with. They're starting to see the, the, the importance of corporate worship and corporate gathering. And I'm not, I'm not here to be a lawbreaker. If they, said, if they say we can't do it, we're going to have to figure something out because I'm probably going to break the law at least the first Sunday. <laughs> it's just hard to not meet here again. We've had this building fumigated. We've had it sprayed. And we're going to do it again probably in a couple months. We'll do it again. It's not that expensive. It's, it, to me, it's worth the money because I want people to walk in the door with a mindset that they're safe in this building. Pastor, you don't believe God? Yeah, I believe the Holy Spirit cleaned this place out this morning. Amen. I believe His Spirit ran some things out of here. Amen. Maybe not a virus, but some other things. Yeah. Well, listen. Paul's telling us. 
Paul said, I'm not reflecting on who Saul was. I'm not reflecting on what Saul did. I'm not reflecting, looking back on, on what, where I came from. What I've got to do is I'm, I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm forgetting the things, forgetting the things that are behind. Other words, not even remembering that they happened. But pastor, I can't bring, you don't want to bring the good into this year. Let the good be where it is. Let what God did in 2020 be what he did then. Let God do a new thing in 2021. Let God do something powerful in 2021. Let God do something that's supernatural in your life in 2021. Because I believe, listen, I believe we've got a lady in our church. She's not here today. We've got a lady in our church that has two bad kidneys. And we all love her. We love Miss Jean. If she's watching, I'm talking about you. She's got two bad kidneys. She can't be here today because she's at Dallas's. When they have a holiday on Friday, it messes her up. She can't be here. She's at Dallas's. You know, and, and, and next week, she's got the same deal with New Year's Day. She's got to go to Dallas's on Sunday. Jean's feeling better. She's doing good. She misses the church. We miss her. But I'm telling you, ever since I met that woman, I've been feeling something in her, in her that God's going to do something supernatural. Maybe 2021, she's going to get two new kidneys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Pastor, if, they get, if she gets a donor, well, she can do it through a donor. She can do it through the, the healer. <laughs> he can do it without even having surgery. She can just wake up one morning and say, you know what, I feel pretty good. I'm going to go to Dallas's. Uh, Miss Jean, you don't need Dallas's. Your kidneys are functioning and they're perfect. <laughs> Amen. Woo! I might actually run around Griffin if that happens. Yeah. I just believe, I believe God can do those things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just yeah. believe he can. that he's still a, a miracle worker. Yes. Yeah. I still believe that he can pull, he pulled me out of the miry clay and placed my feet on solid ground. Amen. He went into every drug-infested drug house that I ever walked into and, and sat there with me while I was there and kept my life spared. There was plenty of times I probably should have been in jail or probably under the jail. Many times I drove through a roadblock with enough drugs in my trunk of my car in a duffel bag with scales and bags and everything, just trying to go to jail, I guess. Stupid. That I went through a roadblock and they said, oh, no, nope, go on, sir. We're not looking for you. And just think, whoo, uh -huh, I beat you. <laughs> and something said, shut up. You know, you didn't. <laughs> okay, fine. But I, I ain't going to jail. Really arrogant about it. And then said, I hit an altar in Riverdale, Georgia in 1996. I hit an altar and I realized, huh, you are what pulled me through all of that. Why? Because at 14, he called me to preach. Here in this city, under my brother as my pastor. He called me to preach at the altar one Sunday morning. I felt like my whole inside of my body was about to burn up. It felt like a, a fire in my bones. Oh, my God. I didn't know how to translate it. I didn't know how to get it out. I went to every older man in the church. I went to, to ranger commanders. I went, I went to the youth guy. I went to other, other spiritual men. I didn't go to my pastor because my pastor told me every Sunday, I got something to tell you, but you're not ready. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Tell me. I kept, I just, I, I'd just go get this book, and I'd put my face in it, and I just, just uh, I couldn't get enough. But at 16, I was selling dope on the campus of Griffin High School on Taylor Street. Short and lived. Why? Because I listened to a wrong voice. Now, I'm not reflecting back on my past. I'm telling you my past because my past is what I created. But my future is what God created. And that's what I'm walking in right now. My prayer. My prayer has been since this pandemic, and my prayer will remain in 2021. God, you called me at the age of 14. Whatever that calling was is what I want today. Yes. I, I, it is pastoring, but I don't believe we've reached the level yet of where God wants us to be. I believe there's something supernatural and powerful that's going to transition in this little church. It may not get bigger as far as numbers, but I'm going to tell you something. It's going to get stronger in the spirit.
we need a worship leader. Or do we? <laughs> He's moved pretty well through our yeah. few weeks without one. I do believe worship leaders are important. They're part of the church. I know Jesus never had a worship leader when he preached, but if he was here, he probably wouldn't need one anyway. But <laughs> the point is this. It's a ministry that God calls people to, and I think we need it. I think we need it, but we need the one who God wants us to have. Not that the ones that's been here, not the ones that's been here have done bad. They've all done great. We've had some powerful anointed people here. But God has transitioned. So I'm going to tell you as a pastor, I'm not going to look back on what was. I'm going to look on what's coming. Because what's coming is what's going to be for that season. I believe God works in seasons. Some seasons are short. Some seasons are long. It's not like our seasons spring, summer, winter, fall, and all. It's no. It's God's seasons can be a short season or they can be a long season. But whatever they are, they're going to be productive. Amen. That's right. Amen. We've had great worship in this church. Great worship leaders in this church. We, we, we've done amazingly well. And we, you know, and we haven't had like an abundance of them. I mean, there's a lot of churches that had 12 pastors in four years. I mean, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Something's wrong with the pastor of the church. I don't know which one it is, but, but it's not that we've just they've been revolving doors. We've had we've had them for longevity, and and some for short seasons, and God moved them to something else. Who am I to sit back and say no? Now, if any of you try to leave, it's not God. It's the pizza you ate last night. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have pizza. Well, whatever you ate, that's what, no. I'm just saying, listen, in ministry, we have to understand, especially in leadership, God transitions people for his purpose, not for mine. Right, right. When God, has, when God moves you to somewhere, just know that it's God when you come and, and make that decision. Know that it's him. But listen, the last few weeks, um, I believe worship has been taken to a new level. Yes. And here's what I want to tell you. I've had several pastors, several preachers, several people, missionary, tell me they've been, they've been in churches around. You know, the missionary's been in churches all over the U.S. He has support from all over the U.S. He's been in a lot of churches. He said, Pastor, I've been in churches of 5,000 people when it was packed wall to wall before the pandemic, of course. He said, I've been in churches that had 100 people packed wall to wall. I've been in churches where they had 20 people and they were scattered out throughout the building. He said, there were seats in everywhere. He said, I've been in all size, all kinds of services. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. I've never seen a church enter into worship like your church did that Sunday I was here with no worship leader. Why? Let me tell you something. What I feel God is speaking to me about our worship is that we're not relying on somebody we're relying on him. Amen. Not that we don't need somebody. Don't ever get wrong that I don't want a worship leader because I pray for one every day. I connect with people all day. Hey, you know anybody that leads worship? You know anybody can help us out? Anybody can fill in? I, you know, God's got somebody that's going to be permanently here for whatever season he's going to put them here. But I'm telling you right now, God is teaching me that I don't need you to rely on somebody. If you can enter into the throne room and worship me, then that's all I'm after. If I can look at some words up there and I can hear a song coming through the speakers. Let me tell you something. When you worship at home, you don't have a worship leader. Oh, I know we need it. it it's needful. Because why? Because God has called them to do it and he wants to put them somewhere to use them. And that's why I think it's important. Because it is a ministry. It is a call of God. It absolutely is. But we can't reflect. What's coming up in, in this next week is a brand new year. Oh, Pastor, so we're going to go into 2021 with no pandemic? I don't know. Maybe. God can end coronavirus right now if he wanted to. Why hasn't he stopped it? I don't know. I'm not him. You have to ask him that. I'm not being funny. I'm just telling you. God's used it for his church. Whatever the enemy has for bad, God uses it for good. All things work together for good for them that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. No matter what, the enemy's got schemes, the enemy's got fiery darts, the enemy's got, he's got, he's got manipulation, and he's got, he's got deception, he's got all of these things. 
that he's going to try to throw at us. But everything he tries, he's trying to do something to counteract what God has already done. And he knows, he knows, listen, he knows his time is running short. He done been defeated in the garden. He got defeated when Jesus was a baby. He got defeated at Calvary. Because he had just he knew exactly. It's over. I finally won. I couldn't defeat him as an infant. I couldn't defeat him as a toddler. I couldn't stop his birth. I couldn't, I couldn't kill him when I was a baby. So I finally, after all this time, I finally succeeded. He's finally dead. So Satan's with his little people. He's throwing his little get-together. Jesus is killed. He's dead. He's out of my life. He's gone. And about that time, somebody kicks the door in. And says, I need the keys to death, hell, and the grave. I have all authority, even over you. Listen. Listen. Can't reflect. We can't look back. That stuff's behind me. It's gonna, Paul says it stays behind me. Paul went on to say some more things in here. And, and I, I don't want to try to bring everything out. I was going to do it, but... I got away from myself. He said he's already told people, he's already told them about those that were coming. He's even doing it again. He's weeping and crying about it. He said their destination is destruction. Let me tell you, what anybody's doing, what anybody's doing, anybody, what anybody's doing that's trying to come against God is going to have a heavy price to pay unless they repent. Pastor, you mean they can repent and be saved? Well, if the Bible's true, it says, Whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. You mean, you mean Charles Manson could have been saved? Yeah. If he'd accepted Jesus Christ. But he, you mean that, that the worst pedophile in the whole world? Yes, if he accepts Jesus Christ. But their heart right now is cold. And their mind is not there the chances are probably very slim but they're still there as long as Jesus is still calling people as long as the Holy Spirit is still drawing people there's always hope but church New Life Assembly we're not looking back we're looking ahead as a church as individuals whatever happened in your life in 2021 and 2020 let it be a reflection in your rearview mirror. You know, it's amazing. The car, the rearview mirror is small, but the windshield is very large. Because what's behind you really don't matter. It's what's in front of you that makes all the difference. Right. Would you bow your heads, please? Father, we thank you. And I pray now, if there's anyone in this room that has not made things, a decision to serve you, a decision to follow you, a decision to accept you, I made you a promise when I accepted this call that I would never close a service without giving somebody an opportunity. Because, Lord, I was given that chance, and I think everybody deserves that opportunity. Now, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I'm not real sure where my heart is. I'm not real sure about my decisions I've made for Jesus, but I want to make it right today. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? I want to pray with you. I know there's hands raised for praying, but I... I Every, every heart's clear, and it's great. It's, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Now, if you're sitting here today, you say, Pastor, I, I'm willing to put it behind me. I'm willing to take this, this, this year and put it behind me, and I want to reflect. I want to look forward, not reflect. I want to look forward on what's coming. If that's you, would you stand right where you are right now? Say, Pastor, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm looking ahead. Behind me doesn't matter. What, 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 what happened, happened, even good or bad, but I'm focusing on what God's going to do now in my days ahead, in the years ahead. Whatever time we got left, God's plan is going to come to full circle. Fathers, you see your church standing here today. You see everybody in this room is standing. And God, we pray, I'm praying right now that you'll help us Keep what's behind us behind us. That the rearview mirror is not even used. 
that we look in the windshield of life and we look ahead at what you're doing, the plans you have, the purpose you have, the ministry you have, the supernatural you're going to do, the anointing that you're going to pour out on your people in this coming year. God, I pray that we receive it with, with a humbleness, with, with, a, with a desire to, to, to be used by you. Father, pour out over your church. Pour out over your, your, your people. God, it, it, this church or, or whatever other church around, God, I pray for all of our churches, God, that this anointing, that this, this year will, will be a reflection in the back, that we won't even remember it, that we'll move forward forgetting what's behind us and pressing on toward that mark, that prize, that mark, and that is that, that hope of eternity with Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning. We praise you this morning. We give you all praise, all glory, all honor. And we just thank you for this day. Lord, I ask you to bless your people. Thank you for our guests this morning. Bless them. Bless them in, in, in all that they do. And Lord, just be with them throughout the rest of this year and in the year to come, Lord. Let, let this year be in the, in the past. And Lord, prosper them in this new year spiritually with a fresh anointing in their life. God, walk with them. Lord, bless your people. Touch your church in a powerful way. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. I'm going to ask you to stand still. My brother wants to read something. You want to read that? He's got something. He, you know, it's from John 3.16. It's pretty powerful. It's pretty good. I've seen it a long time ago. But he asked me if this morning if he could be appropriate to read it. <laughs> I said, we'll find a place to put it. You never know in a Pentecostal church where the Spirit's going to let you do anything but what he wants. But I think it's pretty, it's, it's good. If you've heard it, great. If you haven't, we get to hear it for the first time. Uh, you, you might have heard this before, but I know everybody in here just about knows John 3, 16, right? Well, this writer that wrote this called it the greatest. And he broke it down like this. God is the greatest lover. So love the greatest degree. The world, the greatest company that he gave the greatest act, his only begotten son, the greatest gift, hallelujah, that whosoever, the greatest opportunity, mm. believe this, the greatest simplicity, in him, the greatest attraction, should not perish the greatest promise, but the greatest difference, have the greatest certainty, everlasting life, the greatest promise. And that verse is called the greatest. Woo! He's got copies if you want a copy. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, we'll not have service Wednesday night. I, I know that's not, that's not New Year's Eve, but I know there's still a lot of people got a lot going on with family and stuff. So we're going to kick things off. Listen, I'll tell you this right now. The first Sunday in January... We will resume our Sunday night services, but here's what we're going to do. And I need you to come. I need you to support this. The first Sunday of every month, we're going to come. We're going to gather at 6 o'clock, like normal, and we're going to meet here. We're going to have prayer. The men are going to go to fellowship hall. The women are going to stay here. We're going to resume our men's ministry and our women's ministry meetings every month. I believe in what we may do, we've talked about this, after both are done, we may meet in the fellowship hall, just kind of have some refreshments and just kind of, listen, I believe we need to sharpen one another. I believe we need to pour into one another, and I believe it's important. So we're going to need your support. We're going to need you to come, ladies. You know, if you live an hour away, just come anyway, and you can get home later. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm looking at my niece when I say that, but... Um, and I understand if you live that if you live that far, it's hard to get off work and come. I mean, even Robin and Steve have a hard time during the week doing that stuff with you know with their job. So, but listen, if you can by all means get here, don't just stay home. Come support this, be part of this, get in, get, pour into one another. We're just gonna have a great time. We're gonna have a great year. God bless you. We'll see you next year. Hold on to them. You catch these folks. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, Donnie, catch them. Catch them. I just want to say, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you. Y'all new in the